Hey guys, Carl Brown here, and we're going to learn how to play Spanish Fly today. So I'm going to break it down section by section, try to make it as easy to understand as possible. There are some parts to it that have, um, you know, not very formulaic playing, I guess I would say. Mostly when he's doing the fast picking stuff, it's kind of just basing around some various picking ideas, and I'll show you those. And then when he gets to the tapping, it's it's very you know systematic. There's patterns involved that are pretty easy to follow. All right, make sure you get in the tuning. We are in D standard, so every string is tuned down a whole step, um, and where you will be good to go. So let's get into it. All right, now the opening here is tapped harmonics. Now these tapped harmonics are pretty difficult on a nylon string guitar. It's, they're a lot more difficult to play here. Um, for whatever reason, Eddie decided to play this song on a tuned down nylon string. So, so the taps themselves are not that bad on the bass strings, but when you get to the treble strings, it's really hard to get them to come out. Um, so we're going to start here holding an E suspended four chord, so just a second fret across the fifth, fourth, and third strings there. So that's what's being held here, and we're going to tap outlining that shape. So we're going to tap just 12 frets up exactly, right over the 12th fret with your index finger there. Or if you tap with your middle finger, you can do that too. By the way, I hold my pick just kind of between, I hold it with my middle finger, between the two knuckle joints, and I just kind of throw it in there. So that's how I can grab it quickly, you know, go between the picking and the tapping, um, because it's just right there. So two taps on that right over the 12th fret of the uh, e, low E string. I know it's not an E anymore, but I'm going to call it that. And then we have two taps over the 14th fret on the A, two taps over the 14th fret on the D, so we have this. Then we get to the 14th fret on the G string, and when you get to the nylon string, the, the treble strings there, these are the ones that kind of make it difficult to, to make the note come out. You're going to tap the 14th fret there, then the 12th fret on the B, and then back to the 14th on the G. Then you're going to switch to an A minor chord in the left hand, and then we're going to have this. All right, so we're gonna pick just, you're gonna hit each one once now. You're gonna go. So just picking the, um, tapping the 12th fret of the A string, then 14 on the D, 14 on the um, G string. So you see we're just following the shape in the left hand. And you go over to the first, um, the 13th fret right there, tapping on that on the B string. And then up to the third fret, you're going to play with your pinky on the B string while tapping the 15th fret up here. And then the open B string. So you're going to let go down here and pick up the tap over the 12th fret. Then you just repeat all of that. All right, then we get to uh, a probably a, an easier, more of a basic tapping pattern. It sounds like this. All right, so we got some harmonics there too. So we're gonna start this, this is gonna be a repetitive pattern and these are the easier things to learn here. You're gonna tap at the 12th fret, pull off to the 7th fret on the G, pull off to five, and pull off to the open string. And then when you come back up, you're going to grab the seventh fret there again on the G before tapping the top note again. So it's one, two, three, four, five. It's kind of a five note pattern. So you're going to repeat that pattern four times there on that string. And the last time you play the pattern, when you come back with the seven, you're gonna go over to the uh, D string seventh fret, and then you can tap again up here at the top and do the same pattern again four times on this string. 
Let's try this. All right, then we're gonna come over to the A string and. So what I'm doing there is I'm tapping the 12th fret each time, pulling off to the seventh fret there, tap the 12 again, pull off to the six, tap again, pull off to the five, tap again, pull off to three, and then pull off to the open string. Then we have some harmonics. So the harmonic is uh, fifth fret there on the D string, and then the two harmonics on the G and the B string on the fifth fret. Do the same thing in the seventh, same thing in the twelfth, and then the last one is just going to pick the harmonic there at the seventh fret of the A string, and then the seventh fret of the A and the D together. Now we have this little picking pattern that starts out kind of erratic and then it goes into a more definitive pattern. It sounds like this. Now on this guitar, I'm not sure what type of a nylon string he was playing. This one uh, is not a cutaway. So for me, getting way up here is uh, very uncomfortable, but I'm gonna do it because I suffer from my art. But anyway, um, if hopefully if you have a nylon string, if you're playing this, you have some sort of a cutaway because it's really odd. You, know, you can probably see my fingers are just not in a good form trying to reach up when I start getting up, up high there because I'm being blocked out by this big hunk of wood. So anyway, so this thing, what I'm saying is when I say it's erratic, it's just not something you're going to be able to get note for note. It's more of um, a series of like licks that he's doing a variation on. Now first, just start to get him to pick going. He kind of works his way up going three, four, five, and kind of three, four, five, seven there on the on the A string by moving up that index finger, just shifting it, and he works his way over to to basically the G string, which is where most of the action is going to happen. And he's, you know, here when he's accenting those notes in the pattern, it's, it's very quick. So what the pattern really is, is when he gets to the G string, do a quick hammer on, pull off, four to five, back to four. And then over to seventh on the D. So we kind of want to go. And then you, when you do that, then you do, Kind of a full lick on the G string, which is five, seven, four, uh, five, seven, five, four. Kind of just like a pull off. So we have this. So what I'm trying to get across here is it's not just like. My idea is just to get up there and just kind of do those two licks right there because that's basically what he's doing. Uh, and it, it very quickly kind of slides up his uh, um, pinky finger at the very end of it. So it's just, I'll do it slow. Just kind of slide it up like that. Just kind of just, just briefly. Just, I know it sounds stupid, but he's really building up to this main lick up top, which is very formulaic and very fast, but it's a repetitive lick. Um, that you can actually follow. So, so when you get there, slide up. The, he's sliding because he's jumping up here to the seventh fret. And now we actually have a definitive pattern to follow. All right. So what's going on is the pattern is you're going to hammer on three notes on the B string. So you're going to hammer seven, eight, ten on the B. Then you're going to pick those same frets on the high E string. So we have this. So basically, I just did that pattern twice. So now you're gonna to want to pick this as a downstroke, and then up, down, up on the high E string. All right. So we have you're gonna do that pattern twice there, then move up to eight, ten, and twelve um, on the. You can play it with you know these your first 
ring and pinky or, or the second finger. And the same lick across the A10 and 12 on both strings again. So hammering the B string, picking the high E. So do that same pattern twice there, then move that exact same thing up two frets. And then we're going to end it with... So we're going to start with 12, 13, 15 there on the B. And then, then 12, 13, 15 on the high E string. But this time you're really just doing all legato. So uh, you can go up to the top note actually. Pick up to the top note. Then pull off 13, 12. Over to 13 on the B, 14 on the G, 15 on the G, on the, on the D string. Then the open B and high E string together. All right, the next uh, pad, the next section once again contains um, some fast picking licks that are kind of based around the same idea, but they're kind of randomly thrown out. So it's not something you're gonna be able to get for note for note, but it sounds kind of like this. until we get down to that legato lick where it kind of then goes back into like a repetitive pattern. So what am I doing there? First we're going to start with... So we're going to start with an open A string, 7th fret on the D, you're going to mute the G string, you're going to do a bar at the 5th fret of the B and the high E string. So I get that G string muted. Now you're gonna add the pinky at the seventh fret on the high E string. So you're gonna strum across this and then pull off to the fifth fret on the high E. Then we have a so that's just eight, seven, six, five on the high E string. So just as just kind of staccato eighth notes and then a little four, five, seven there, which will triplet. Then we go crazy. All right, he will never play this lick ever the same way twice. And it's just not what this kind of thing is. So what he's doing though, is really a series of two different licks that he's randomly taken down across the strings. And Eddie Van Halen is very, he's a big fan of symmetrical uh, licks where we're we're not worried about fitting within a scale shape. We're, we're, we're just using one, two, and four here, and, our, and we're kind of taking it across strings. So the lick when he starts getting going, one of them is going to be this. You're going to pick five, hammer seven, pull back to five, pull off to four, over to seven on the B. And back to the four on the high E. So get that lick underneath your finger. And the next lick that you want to look at is this one, which is hammer four to five, back, pull back off to four on the high E, over to that seven again on the B, then back to the four. So we have this lick now. So we have the first one, and then. And then if you kind of take that across, now this is kind of a generalization of what he's doing. It's not note for note. Like I said, it's impossible to get. So how many, how many of these notes you actually pick and how much you just do legato, that should be a random thing. If, if you played this stuff before, you know how these licks are done. And it's 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 not really something that you're gonna kind of write down, but that's the notes that he's doing this all out of. Now after the initial lick at the beginning, he'll kind of do that lick on the on the B string, and then he'll take it down to the G string, and spend most of the time there. And then he works his way down to some legato licks, which is where we get into a formulate thing again. 
and it leads into the tapping part. So if you have trouble, you know, jumping from pick to tap, uh, you know, picking to tapping, this is where you would change that or just throw the pick in the air or whatever. So it looks like this. All right, so what's going on there? We have, this is all in the A string. You're gonna hammer five, hammer seven, pull off to three, pull off to the open string. You're gonna do that four times. Then take that exact same lick and move it up two frets. So now it's seven, nine, pull off to five, and then back to the open again. So this, After you've done that four times there, then we start the tapping part. The first tapping lick looks like this. All right, so that's the first tapping section. Now these are, are kind of just your standard tapping patterns. Um, we're gonna start with tapping at the 12 and pulling off the five and hammering on to nine. Now the one thing about this tapping section here some monster stretches going on in the um, left hand. So you need to really lower that thumb so you can get those stretches in. So we're gonna have the tap into the 12, pull off the five, and then hammer to nine. Do that lick twice. Then take it to the D string and do it twice. Then move it over to the G string, and then we're gonna actually start the little uh, melodic arpeggios. So you can do the pattern there, still the same frets, 12, 5, 9. You can do it four times. Then we're going to drop the pinky back to four. I told you there's some stretches going on here. So the tapping stays the same though and the pinky stays the same. So it's four and nine in the left hand. So we have this. Okay, and then we're going to tap at the 11th fret on the G. And it's going to be four and eight, same pattern, but four and eight in the um, left hand. So we have this, and then four and eight in the left hand, tapping the eleven. You're going to do that one eight times instead of four. So that's the basic pattern that he's going to continue doing now. Uh, the next lick he jumps into out of that is right here. It's basically the same thing, just move down a couple frets. frets get bigger so it's even more fun to stretch and just feel your tendons just breaking out of the back of your hand. So um, we are once again tapping 10 now, 3, pull off to 3, and pull off a hammer to 7. So it's the same pattern, do it twice, same thing on the D, and then over to the G string, same thing now four times. Then like we did before, move the index finger back one fret. let out a, a gentle scream, then go pinky down to the sixth fret and then nine you're gonna be tapping. So it's just the same thing we did up top, two frets higher. So it's tapping nine, pull off to two, hammer to six. Now when he does this, if he does this eight times, he slides up the pinky there, basically moving the hand up to prepare for the next tapping section, which is once again, pretty much the same thing again, just on different strings. It looks like this. All right, so we're going tapping 12, hammering. So it's literally the same thing we did before, except we're starting on the low E string. So it's 12, five, nine, twice. Then 12, five, nine on the A twice. And then over to the D string four times. Drop the index finger back one. And then drop the tapping down to 11 while moving the pinky down to eight. All right, out of that, we finally get to the fifth string tapping that ends it, and it's he breaks away from this pattern a little bit. So I'll play this whole thing that ends the piece here right now. So that tapping is going to start the same, 12, 5, 9, 4 
times, move the index finger back to four. And here's where he kind of varies from the pattern he was doing earlier. Now he's gonna tap 10 and play three and seven in the left hand. And he's gonna create a little bit of tension by moving this top note, tap note down to nine. And then you're gonna resolve that down, hold the nine there, to keep tapping nine, but you're gonna play two and six in the left hand. So we have this. Now, he does that a few times with between tapping nine and hammering two to six. Then he makes it even more interesting. He plays, changes the pattern up at the very end. He's tapping nine, pulling off to six here, pulling off to two, pulling off to the open string, hammering back on to two, coming back up on six. He kind of starts slowing down here too. the open low E string. Obviously it's a D. And then after he does that, you're going to go and grab that sus4 chord, E sus4 again. So as this ring, he's going to tap across starting now from the A string. So that's just tapping the 14th fret on the A twice. Once again, I'm outlining this E sus4 chord. Then 14th on the um, D string twice. Uh, G string twice at the 14th fret, 12th fret on the B string twice, and the high E string once at the 12th fret. So after the... Alright, so this thing is a beast, I understand that, and there's going to be a couple of sections that you can make it sound like he does, but you're not going to get a note for note because he wouldn't do it himself either. It's kind of an off-the-cuff thing. But those are two little brief things. As long as you know how the picking patterns are created, um, you can do your own thing and make it sound pretty pretty convincing. Uh, but the other licks, they're you know, very formulaic, easy to follow. They're just pattern-based, uh, but yet they're still very musical and a lot of fun to play. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for GuitarLessons365.com.